or uh, interpretation of that problem. So in this manner, research is the systematic collection, analysis, and interpretation of data to answer a certain question or solve a problem. So not always we solve the problem, but it is, it is good to address some problem through research methods. And that research is called action research. There are some other definition for uh, research and uh, you may find interesting those uh, definitions are such as a careful investigation or inquiry. So, but for what? For finding new facts, a voyage of discovery to finding, seeking new facts and an art of scientific investigation to find out new facts. So all, in all the definition, the one thing that's common is finding new facts, finding the truth. That means a researcher is truth seeker and a researcher is finding out the new facts so that his or her research would be novel. If your research is not novel, if you are reinventing the wheel, that's of maybe no use. So it's a movement from known to unknown. You know a bit about something. For example, COVID-19, we know a bit. It's, it's a disease spread from Wuhan, China, uh, caused by a virus. That's all we know in the beginning. And then after, after uh, one and a half year, we know more about thing, uh, more about the virus, the genome, and uh, now we have a vaccine against it. So, Coming to the second, second objective, why do we do research? We do research to provide some benefits. So the benefits the research has provided in the past, in the, in the 20th century is vaccination, motor vehicle safety, safety in terms of uh, the, the design and the seat belt and the airbags. This all comes through research. Safer workplaces, control of infectious disease, such as the recent example is COVID-19, although not uh, fully controlled, but uh, to some extent, uh, decline in death from cardiovascular disease. This all comes through uh, research. Right. So, anyone who can tell me what this organism is? Anyone? What this organism is. This is Toxoplasma gondii. Any relevance to you? Yes, torch infection in the OBS gynae we are concerned about. And what? Toxoplasmosis, yes. Excuse me, sorry. So, yes, it's Toxoplasma gondii, and the, the source is cats, feces, cats. What is relevance to us? Research shows that Toxoplasma gondii is related to change in behavior of the affected individual, affected organism. Most of the time, Toxoplasma gondii infects rats mouse and and that toxoplasma gondii infection changes the behavior of wax what change in behavior how do we know that it changes behavior because we did research we did research to find out what is the effect of toxoplasma gondii infection on rats and we and finally we found out that it affects their behavior they become more risk taking risk takers, they cannot avert risk. They become more um, suicidal type of thing. What if this infection is occurred in, in some other individual, what happens? So once it, this infection occurs in some individual, some organism, it affects their limbic system. And once the cyst load is higher, then their risk taking abilities are increased. They can take more risk. If you can take more risk, what happened? You have a more, uh, more probability, more chances of getting hurt. 
right? So this is this is this may be interesting and this may be weird that how come epoxoplasma gondii parasite can have some effect on behavior, especially behaviors of human. Could it uh, be happening with humans? Yes, it, it can be. And there are researches which are showing that uh, the individuals who are infected with toxoplasma gondii, they have more rage, more aggression, and they have changed behavior. So uh, the next question, the next objective, how, so the previous slide was just to tell you that Evidence-based medicine is important, EBM. And evidence-based medicine is something where you, you find the evidence and you then practice your clinics or your treatment management as per the uh, available evidence. So the available evidence is showing that some psychiatric illnesses can be related to toxoplasma gonda. So what could be the, uh, what could be the impact of this finding? This, the, the impact could be we can treat proxoplasma gondii in certain patients and maybe that can avert or that can um, cure their psychiatric illnesses. But not all psychiatric illnesses are related to proxoplasma gondii. I'm trying to finish it within the half an hour thing. So I may not be able to take up your questions. You can send me your questions on my email. My email is... Uh, uh, ashraf.jahangi at dhs.edu.pk. I prefer if you send me brief queries um, um, I, uh, and I hope to answer them promptly. So that's my email. And uh, so how do we classify research? So the research could be clinical, pure clinical research conducted in the clinical setting. The research could be Epidemiological, that's conducted in the outfield without any lab testing, without any uh, uh, radiological support, and those epidemiological research is based on question and answering. Not necessarily all epidemiological research is without labs and investigation, but more, but quite a number of times. And there could be clinical epidemiological research as well. And there could be experiments or trials Experiments or trials, experiments can be done in the, in, in the clinics or in the hospital setting on, on patients and uh, uh, sub subjects. And experiments can be done in the community. So those are called community trials. Especially experiments can be curative in nature or can be preventive in nature. So that's the classification that you need to keep in your mind that what type of research you want to do. And, and in the end, there could be basic sciences research. So the next objective of our lecture is, what are the steps of conducting research? Obviously, at any, uh, in, in any endeavor uh, you are pursuing for any topic, in any field, the first thing is question, the problem, the research objective that comes into your mind at the very beginning. So that's the very important thing on top of the list. So thinking about the topic, formulate your research question and have your objectives ready. At the beginning of the research, you need to transform your research question into doable research objective. The research objectives helps you to, um, to, to, to be very focused and do not uh, be off track from your project and just do the relevant research, relevant methods uh, for your, to answer your question. So research objective, if you don't devise your research objectives at the beginning, your research may be directionless or you may end up uh, having no answer for your question. Especially research objective, formulating research objective is important because the next, all the things in the research project, such as the research study design, your research variables, even sampling and uh, analysis is based on your research objective. So once your research objectives are ready and concrete, solid, robust, then you can, you can easily find out the answers of other steps. So as you can see, the first step 
is interlinked with almost all the steps. So research objectives are very important. So we'll share this slide with you on your uh, LMS portal. Uh, the coordinate, I'm sending the, these slides to the uh, LMS and they'll, they'll share it with you. So the um, research object, first priority is to formulate your question, as I said earlier. Then you have to figure out how you will answer it. So for example, I, I'll give you some, some, some examples, then we can see uh, how can we understand this easily. So um, once you have the research question, you have to formulate your research objectives and then you will find out the key terminologies in your research objectives, key terminologies, and then you search literature. That, why search literature? Because you have to look at how come how, how did others answer this uh, same or similar question? Not same, if maybe similar question. So, and how come you can uh, relate your objectives and your methods uh, with respect to what has been done earlier? So, <clears throat> so, um, when you when you select your research question, most of the time it's based on your uh, your interest, basically interest. So, for example, my interest is maternal and child health, HIV, and infections and injuries and trauma. So, I have quite a, a long list of interests. So, uh, I usually do research in in multiple different domains. But if you have uh, certain interests, for example, molecular biology, then you have to collaborate with someone who has molecular biology background. So, and most of the time it depends on your speciality, but as a student, um, because you are not uh, a specialist right now, so you can just follow your interest. And most of the time, the bolded and the, uh, the, the large size text indicates that what is the, the, the topic should be, what is actually needed uh, as uh, with, with reference to the local uh, disease uh, burden. So uh, should we do a research on phenylic ketonuria? Maybe not. Should we do a research on HIV? Yes, because HIV is our problem. Maybe phenylic ketonuria is not. But if you ask the same question in, in some Western country, the answer could be yes to PKU. And sometimes the funding body has some interest in particular topic and you have to follow those topics. So the topic should be, uh, should be relevance, should have relevance to your, your uh, local disease burden. And uh, only then you can make some impact in terms of uh, curing disease or preventing uh, illness or, or averting some mortality. So, um, your, because I'm a bit in rush, so this slide is telling you it is mostly self-explanatory, but uh, your research question must be innovative. Almost all the, all the bullets here are indicating uh, to one direction that your topic must be specific and must be innovative. And uh, how will you know that your topic is innovative? Because uh, you will do the literature search. And how you will do the literature search? For literature search, um, for literature search, you have, uh, you have multiple search engines and the library. So why do we do literature search? To, uh, uh, to avoid uh, the, uh, the work that has been already done. So we should not do it, redo it. We should do it we should capitalize upon that work and we should do some new thing, finding out some new facts. So um, um, by doing literature search, you will know what has been done and what you should not do and what you should do and you will learn new methods and approaches. So um, of course, you, your, your research will have some rationale and uh, and that rationale is about the, the why you want to do research. That rationale is not your research objectives. Rationale is about 
uh, what is the impact of your research? What is the benefit of doing this uh, uh, objective? What is the benefit benefit of solving this problem? So that's the rationale. So uh, most of the time, uh, the students uh, in the clinics um, and faculty, uh, the clinical and medical faculty, um, both of them are doing quantitative research or mixed method research, but uh, at certain times with with uh, appropriate expertise, uh, people can do qualitative research in the clinical setting or public health setting. So um, on this slide, the, the important message is, you must do the literature search, read the literature search, and always write a summary that comes into your mind after reading a research article. So what is the difference between goals and objectives? When you, when, you, uh, when you have a research question in your mind, you have, as I said, you have to transform that question into a research objective, but there is another terminology called goals. What is the difference between goals and objectives? So goals is a broader, in a, in a broader sense, what you want to do. An objective is more specific. So goal is, at the beginning, I want to find out the relationship between, um, between infections and psychiatric diseases. And so that's your area is infection and psychiatry. But in the end, when you, when you transform those goals into objective, those would be uh, more specific and relate directly to research person that so you can replace uh, infection with drugs of plasma gondii and uh, psychiatric illness. Uh, you can uh, specify the psychiatric illness such as schizophrenia. So um, objectives uh, could be uh, primary objectives and secondary objectives. So what are these? We'll do it in the next lecture next week, hopefully. Yes. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum Sir, two minutes class will be finished, sir. Okay, I will try to do it. So, in, in not in all the research researches, there would be research hypothesis, but those researches which are analytical in nature, comparing two groups or maybe more than two groups, there would be a research hypothesis. So, this is one example. For example, if you are doing a CAP study, CAP study are not abandoned, the study design, but at, at current moment, people don't like CAP studies, but I do. So, uh, for example, in the family medicine, we are doing a CAP study on communicable disease such as hepatitis. Our goal is to contribute to the reduction of hepatitis in Karachi through studying public perception about the disease. What are our, our objectives? Our objective is to, to assess the awareness, knowledge, and attitude of the general public towards hepatitis in Karachi. So goals could be broader, but objectives are specific. Second example is uh, interventional study in the area of cardiology, ischemic heart disease. Goal is to contribute to prevention of ischemic heart disease. Primary objective could be to determine the effect of reducing LDL on the occurrence of MR. And the secondary objective would be something that you can find out by the way, by, while doing the primary objective to describe the side effects of lowering LDL, that's its secondary objective. So research, step one, do literature search. Second, collect data and analyze, process it, and then publish it. You can publish it anywhere. You can search your, um, um, uh, you can publish it, for example, uh, you can publish it in this manner. Introduction, methodology, results, and discussion. That's called IMRAD. And where you can publish, you can publish nationally, internationally. That's your choice. And the, the, the question of the resources, because international journals co may cost you more than the national journals. I hope uh, this will help you understanding. At the end, I'm showing you this NIH website where you can register free of cost and attend some uh, clinical research courses, uh, which are uh, uh, which are very useful and they may grant you some um, some certificate as well.
And there's another uh, another website where you can register for clinical courses. I don't know the second website has some cost or not, but if there is a cost, so just be aware uh, to, before choosing it. Thank you very much. These are the books recommended for you. And these are the references which I uh, used to make this, these slides. Thank you very much. Uh, hope to see you soon. Baba, Baba, please. Sir, I am giving class. Okay, thank you.